Your business is not working because there's something that you're personally doing to hold back your own success. Now that might sound like a hard statement. You might be working hard for so many years to grow what you think is going to be a successful company, but I promise you, it's not your business that's the problem, it's you. And in today's video, I wanna talk about some of the top three things that I've noticed as a difference between successful entrepreneurs versus unsuccessful entrepreneurs that are finding themselves in a world of trouble. Let's talk about number one. Number one is really about strengths and weaknesses, okay? What do I mean when I say strengths and weaknesses? Write this down. This is going to be a really important point. Whatever strength and weaknesses that you possess is going to show in your business. Your business is going to be a reflection of you. I know so many business owners that are like super perfectionist that you never see any material that they put out. You don't see any content. You don't see them, you know, engaging with people from day to day, all because they're in their own head. Oh man, you know, if the video doesn't look just like this, I can't put it out. Oh, well, you know, such and such person told me this about how imperfect my video was. And even though they don't have a business that's better than my business, I'm listening to them and I'm never going to do anything to put out my brand. You are the strengths and weaknesses of your company because you are your company. You're not a large corporation. You don't have 100,000 employees that are working for you. <laughs> you don't have people all over the country that are putting in their own contributions and making your company what it is today. The company is you. You are your business. So whatever your strengths and your weaknesses are is going to be apparent in your business. I'm going to tell you about my own business personally. You know, one of the things that I notice um, separates me from a lot of my friends and peers that would get into a business is I don't have any problems with delegating things to other people. Now I got buddies of mine that's super control freaks. Th giving them any opportunity to pass off work to another person is something that they wouldn't do even if their life depended on it. <laughs> when they even just think about giving somebody else some work, it terrifies them. And guess what? You see how it impacts their business because it can only go but so far. Listen, success is a team sport. Business thrives around teams. The most successful businesses in America all have teams and employees. So if you're going to be the person that's like super antisocial, you know, you don't really get along with other people, nobody else can do a good job outside of you, these are the thoughts that you have in your own head, then guess what? You're going to be the thing that holds back your company. Your company has a lot of potential. You could have a great product. You could have a great brand. You know, uh, you got a ton of creativity. But if you're not giving the business the fuel and the energy that it needs to thrive, then you're never going to get ahead. You know, one of my weaknesses personally is I, I'm so laser focused, it's a gift and a curse. So a lot of times you guys have checked out my YouTube channel and you see me coming out with new videos. I'm putting out videos every single day, every single day. I'm laser focused. But guess what? If I'm doing this thing, then there might be something else that might need my attention but it might not get a lot of my focus. I've had to figure out and learn how to be able to balance myself that much more so that way, you know, just because I'm working on one thing, it's not like I just put everything else on the back burner. You know, in a business, you have to wear many hats. 
So your business is going to come down to who you are, your strengths and your weaknesses. All right. It will be apparent. The second thing that I want to convey, and this really goes along with this first point, is the power of personal change. You know, again, there's so many of you guys that like, you watch these videos because you want to call yourself entrepreneurs and you're well intended. But your problem is you're so busy looking for the tool. You're so busy looking for the hack. You're so busy looking for this app that you can just buy in hopes that it will change your life that you fail to realize that over 80% of your business success is going to come from your own personal change. It's not going to come from a technical change, okay? It's gonna come from a personal change. Let me give you an example. Let's say that you're the type of person that doesn't value any of your possessions. You know, you're quick to break things. You never take care of stuff. You know, friends are always laughing about at you because the minute that you buy one thing, it's broken tomorrow. Well, imagine having a form of transportation. You know, you could be a person that has a horse and buggy, or you could be a person that has a 747. Right. Those could be two technical vehicles that you could have to get you to a destination. But if you as a person are not willing to give either one of those vehicles the fuel that it needs to go, both of those things are going to be dead, even though one thing moves a lot faster than the other. See, you might have an advantage over your competition because you have another tool. But the honest truth is a horse is still going to be in motion, even though it might not be as fast as a 747. <laughs> if the 747 is out of gas because you ain't put no gas into it, I don't care how big your plane is. We're still making things happen with the horse and carriage. So it's not so much about the tool. Listen to me. That's a more advanced approach to success. You almost want to think about it like it's a pyramid, right? Like if you could think about your life and you could say, okay, if I, a hundred percent of my life, 60% of it is really you just having the mindset and then guess what? There's so much other effort that you got to put in to just the change before you even talk about any tools, any hacks, any apps that's going to change something in your business. Your personal change is going to be so much more critical than your technical changes. All right. I'm going to give you another example. You know, I've been blessed and fortunate to have a lot of uh, business success over the years. I've been fortunate to say that from the time that I've been running my business up until now, we have grown successfully from year to year in doubling our results. But that comes with a lot of growing pains as a part of the process. Doubling from year to year is so much less about numbers and so much more about mentality. So every year that I go into building my business, trying new things, experimenting, gathering feedback, I'm constantly learning about my own imperfections in business that leads me to where I am today. So one of my biggest things that I've actually had to work through this year is actually overworking too much in a particular area. Sometimes you gotta know when good enough is perfect. And I've paid big money to have mentors, coach me, mentor me, guide me, show me the things that's wrong in my business. And you know, one of the main things that it is that they told me, and this might seem like it didn't even require that much money to learn. Uzziah, sometimes less is more. 
Uzziah, you pride yourself so much in your work that you're actually smothering your business growth. If you actually did less coming from your position, your business would actually be able to double or triple where it's currently at. But guess what? For me to be able to do that, I got things within myself that I have to change. I can't buy no app to change that. I What that looks like for me is when I come to work, instead of me wanting to take on every single important assignment, I've got to make sure that it's equally spread among my team, that they're also having important assignments. You know, instead of me just taking one thing and obsessing about it the way that I may tend to do, I might have to spread my efforts around a few different areas. And being able to have just that personal discipline to be able to look inside yourself and examine, okay, what is it about me, not my business, that is stopping me from getting to the next level? I promise you. If you can be honest enough with yourself to be able to make those discoveries, your business will be um, a lot better than wherever it is today. And one of the most important things that you got to understand is you really cannot get personal change that far unless you have a mentor. Because there's so many things that you're doing that you don't even realize is wrong. There's so many mentalities that you have about a business that you might have been told, you know, something from your mother, your father, your friends, but they didn't start a business the way that you started it. They don't they did not accomplish the things that you wanted to accomplish. So you're allowing other people to infuse their thoughts in your brain, but their success or lack thereof does not replicate the things that you want out of your own life. And so all of those now impressions are normal to you, but it ain't normal to people that has accomplished the things that you want to accomplish. Personal change means that you bring other people into your life and make yourself vulnerable enough to acknowledge that you don't know everything, to acknowledge that there are things that you cannot even see in yourself and you need someone that's farther ahead of you to show you the things that you don't know that you don't know. See that? There's things in your life you don't even know that you don't know it because nobody's told it to you. Personal change is so much more important. Last but not least, okay? I want you to think about how you must balance your personality and you got to balance your personality by becoming a learning machine. Let me tell you what I'm talking about, okay? Balance and learning is one of the most critical things that helps your business grow. Again, I got a lot of people that will reach out to me, whether it be, you know, through text message, Instagram, YouTube, they see me in person. They say, Uzziah, I want to set up my own business. Uzziah, I want to be able to go full time in my business less like you. How do I do it? Well, I always tend to ask them, how much are you reading? How much are you learning? I got to twist folks' hands and arms just to get them to read one book a month. Maybe that's you. Are you dedicated to learning the things that you need to balance out your personality. Because again, okay, there's certain things about you personally, right? That you're good at doing that's good for business. So maybe you're an extroverted person. You don't have any problem creating relationships. Maybe your problem is you don't understand the business side of things. Or maybe on the flip side, maybe you're a very introverted person and you might have certain technical skills, but your problem is garnering relationships because a big part of business is relationships, right? Comes from that book, How to Win Friends and Influence People. I guarantee that there's something within you right now that is your Achilles heel in your business getting to the next level. The question is, are you going 
to add balance to your toolbox to cover up that Achilles heel by learning how to get better in that one area. Okay, so you want to be an entrepreneur and you got a certain skill and you have a certain talent, but you don't understand the business side behind it. Are you willing to make the investment in learning so that way you can balance out your business acumen? Okay, maybe you might be very technically sound, but you don't know how to talk to people worth a damn. Are you going to make the investment in your learning to know how to do that? I see so many aspiring entrepreneurs, even current entrepreneurs, that have worked for years at their businesses and they've reached a plateau. And the reason why they've reached a plateau is because they spend so much of their time not learning that it has literally imprisoned their business. It has literally put their business in a box because of the fact that their worldview their ideas, their concepts, their solutions is only limited by the marginal level of learning that they started to get going in their business, even if they started years ago. If you want to be successful, you got to make the commitment to get better every single day, every single day. Whatever imperfection that you got, you're tightening up on it. You're hiring somebody else to cover that up for you. You're doubling down on your strengths, but you cannot know how to double down on anything unless you're learning how to be better to do it. All right. So again, it's not your business. That's the problem. It's you. And the reason why you're the Achilles heel of your business is because the business is a reflection of your personality. Whatever it is that you're good at, your business will be good at. Whatever it is that you're bad at, it's going to show in your business. If you're not organized, your business will be unorganized. If you're not creative, your business will not appear to be creative. It'll consist of your strengths and weaknesses. It'll only be as good as your personal change that you're willing to course correct out of your own life to take things to the next level. And last but not least, your business is only going to be as good as how much you're willing to balance yourself out, make adjustments, and learn how to get better. And if you want to know how to really be able to transition successfully out of that nine to five job so that way you can have a successful business, and I hope that you picked up in the essence of this video that having a successful business means that you have to have a successful you. If you want to be the right person for success, click the link below or tap the card above because I want to show you the different um, attributes, the steps, the mindset, the personal changes that you have to have in order to be able to make the jump out of your nine to five job into your very own business. Think very closely about everything that I said to you in today's video. Point out one thing that I said to you in this video that doesn't make sense. If you are your business, your business will never be any better or worse than you. So if you're not making the money that you don't want to make, it's because you're not at that level yet to receive it, okay? If you haven't accomplished the things that you want to accomplish in life yet, it's because you're not yet the right person. But you can be the right person if you're willing to make personal change, if you're willing to balance yourself out and learn how to do better. I want to give you the knowledge that you need on how to be able to make that change for the better. So click the link below and I'm going to show you all the steps on how to transition out of your nine to five job into your own business. All right. This is all for free. I'm trying to help you be as successful as you can possibly be, but you got to be the one to make that personal change. So make sure to subscribe to this video, subscribe to this channel, <laughs> share this video with a friend, be your brother's keeper, man. I'm doing this for the people. I'm doing this for the culture. Most importantly, I'm doing this for you. I know that if you have the right information, your life will change forever. So thank you so much for watching this. Be sure to put this into work in your own personal life. And I'll see you on the next video. Take care.